Okay, so here we go. All right, so thanks everybody for showing up. And I like to start with scripture. Uh, and really this scripture has guided uh, the Outreach Foundation's overall uh, European initiatives, which is very new for us. You know, when we think about Europe and mission, we're like, well, what's, what's that about? Uh, uh, you know, the church has been there for years. And, and really what it's about is, is discovering that, that uh, the Holy Spirit is up to some incredible work through what we call as the diaspora. And, and diaspora simply means it's a fancy word for people who are no longer in their homelands. And these are people from various Arabic speaking communities, uh, the Iranians, uh, the people from Central Asia, Africa, who now have migrated for one reason or another uh, to Europe. And what we're discovering is that there is a huge spiritual revival occurring through the diaspora. It's not from the European church. It is happening from Christians who have, were once Muslims and are now propelling the gospel to their own people and then as well as to the European church. It's, it's an absolutely phenomenal uh, thing. It's, it's a real cool thing to behold. And as I've been thinking about this, uh, the Lord has led us to really a, 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 a passage that just captures, captures this thing. And, and here's where he says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals, animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. And, and so this really, I think, is a verse that, that just the set of verses that captures what the Outreach Foundation is trying to or sees as our primary mission in Europe is, is to help people understand that they are called by God by name, that he has chosen them for himself, that they may proclaim praise to him, his glory, uh, and, and they are coming to Europe to discover this kind of thing. And through that, uh, through that birth of the church, there is a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. And really, it is a desert. It is a wasteland. Uh, each of these people that we have met um, and will continue to meet have horrific stories uh, as refugees. And, and it's both in Ukraine, but it's also in Iran. I want to start real quick at Iran um, because it's a more obvious story, maybe. And, and the great thing that are going on in Iran, we were just there from Liverpool and met with a, a partner named Shapur. And this is an example of something that, that I just want to just kind of highlight. Uh, we were at a worship service at the at the Iranian congregation that is housed or nested into a a church called Frontline Church in in Liverpool. Uh, it's an amazing kind of ministry that they have there. And the person who was supposed to set up a baptism, which we were all very excited about, they were going to do this baptism service there uh, while we were there. Well, the person who was going to set that up had COVID. He tested COVID uh, that very morning. Well, we were there uh, worshiping in the afternoon and um, a group of people said, no, we, we're gonna go ahead and do this baptism. So they went out and bought this inflatable pool. And then you can see these kids and a couple of the church leaders there and they're propping it up and they're filling this thing during the worship service. And we were all wondering what was going on. And it was very cold water coming out of there. And so they were in the kitchen boiling water um, and this was all going on during the service, and, and it was just actually an incredible thing. And, and what they wanted to do is that they really wanted this baptism, and there were 11 people who were going to be baptized. This is one of the women who was baptized. You can see two of our team members who went to Liverpool uh, there. Uh, one of those is Mark Mueller, who is our executive director, and then Sean Hevener, who is, who is the pastor of Pe uh, Presbyterian uh, Fellowship of Fountain Inn in South Carolina was there with us. And this is, this is after a long process, actually, of making sure that, the per that each of these people is 
you know, authentically Christian, that they're not somebody who's planted from uh, somewhere else to, to spy. You know, they've got to go through all that. But this, so the people were amazing and, and their stories are incredible. And, and this is another man who has tried to be baptized several times. He finally got it done. Um, he, he was, he, he had gotten a message from his boss that uh, he had to be at work or else he was going to lose his job. He, so he couldn't come to this worship service. And he convinced his boss, uh, hey, can I just go for, for just a few minutes because I, I really want to go meet these people and I need to go be baptized. And his boss said, well, go ahead. Um, so he took his break. On his break, he came and, and this guy came and, and we were able to baptize him. And he had been trying for six or seven months to be baptized. Um, these people really take this seriously, and it, it's just a sign of some amazing things. One of the last nights that we were there in Liverpool, we met with a, a group, uh, an alpha class, and um, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of seven people, uh, after uh, several sessions, seven people that night uh, received uh, Christ as their Lord, and these are, this is really what's going on. There's a huge amount of stuff going on. This was a women's event. And each of these people are Muslim background believers, other than people on our team. Uh, people have become Christians because of just this amazing thing that God is doing in Europe. These are all Iranians. They were Muslims before, and now they are Christians. And they each have precious stories. Um, uh, I've blocked out the face of somebody who can't be seen, who we can't show and, and brought in the picture on the other, on the left-hand side there. Um, this is another person, just an example of the streams in the wilderness that are going on. This man is from Yemen, uh, and he became a Christian while he was in the refugee process. Uh, he has a family back in Yemen. The government has forced him, uh, his, his family, to divorce him. Uh, because they are still Muslim. They have stripped his parenting rights. Uh, so he has children, but he can no longer see them. Uh, his wife, his previous wife, has likely been remarried. And that's the cost these people face when they become Christians. And he is a proud Christian. He is a very uh, strong evangelist, uh, bringing people to Christ all the time in the Arabic-speaking community. Uh, so that he's the guy in the, the his, without the, the scarf on. Um, and the person who's discipling there is Peter Samir, and he is on the right-hand side there. Again, just amazing pictures. And another, uh, these guys are uh, wonderful guys that, that we were able to meet in Liverpool. Um, each of them have become Christian because of the refugee crisis that's happening uh, and the people that they've met. The church is blossoming. And this is in the middle there is uh, Larry Michael, uh, who was there as a counselor. One of the things that they, they all are enduring is significant trauma uh, by being refugees. Uh, and um, so they had asked for us to bring a counselor on this trip. And, and Larry was that one of those people. Um, if you look at the larger picture, the woman on the far right is uh, Shelly, and she uh, from South Carolina, and she came as a female counselor. Uh, and so they were very busy that entire time and are continuing their work counseling through Zoom calls uh, that are going on even as we speak. So very pleased by, by what we're seeing. And so when, when I look, show pictures like this, and there's a reason I'm starting with what's happening in the diaspora of Iran, these types of pictures could be multiplied a hundred times over across Europe because of the refugee crisis. If there were not this refugee situation, the gospel would not be growing as prolifically as it is. Each of the people that you see here, minus the, the, the three of us on the team that are present, presented, this is in Germany, it was taken in October. There's only one man, he's in the far back, um, in a pink shirt. He's the pastor. He is the only one in this picture uh, that was not, was not a Muslim beforehand. 
And, and so this is just an incredible thing. It is a wind that is blowing. The Holy Spirit is a wind blowing through the house of, of Islam, as the book uh, is titled. And it's just been fantastic to see. And that all leads me into what is our, what are really our, the foci for our relationships in Europe. Uh, we, the Outreach Foundation wants to be part of something that is much more than about humanitarian work. Uh, we wanna help people see Jesus and experience God's love through the church that God has planted there. Uh, in Europe. We want to support the church as it makes Jesus' name famous, uh, really through generous hospitality. That's the, that's the initial step, so to speak, that forms the relationships and the trust, and then also adds to that a bold and courageous sharing of the gospel, not hiding the gospel at all, but very clearly saying, hey, listen, we are not just here to to show you hospitality. We want to tell you about Jesus. We want to let you know that you've been called by God, by his, by name. He knows you, he loves you, and we want you to know that. And, and so we want to be part of that. And then the other thing that's key for us, as always with the Outreach Foundation, is that we want to be able to say that we're, trans, we're seeing the Holy Spirit transform our ways of making Christ known back home because the, our partners are teaching us how to do it. Um, I got a great example of a church uh, that I know of, a church that's part of a, a refugee ministry. I won't say where it's happening, um, but it's a, it's a mainline church kind of situation. And, and they've all agreed not to talk about Jesus, not to talk about religion. Uh, and, and this type of thing is not, this is very foreign to what's happening in Europe and what the churches there are doing through the Iranians and others uh, that say, hey, listen, no, that, that's, they are very open to hearing about the Lord right now. And so we admit that we have got some work to do. We have got to learn a lot. Um, so that's, those are the three foci that we are, that are guiding us. And so that is what takes us into uh, the desert of the refugee situation with Ukrainians, because now they have joined the millions of people who are already in diaspora. Uh, they have now added about 4 million people in diaspora. Right now, and this was um, as of Tuesday, over 4 million people have fled Ukraine, mainly women and children, as we've heard. There are over 7 million people who are internally displaced. That means they... And, and some of these have, have gone back home. So about a million have returned to Ukraine for lots of different reasons, but they aren't back home. They're internally di displaced. And then this is a scary um, a reality, it's just heartbreaking. Over 100,000 children have completely disappeared. Uh, and, and that's just a startling number. They can't account for these children anywhere. And the pictures that we're accustomed to seeing, I wanted just to show you pictures that we are accustomed to seeing on the media, pictures of sadness, uh, pictures of people in despair, completely unsettled, wondering where they're going to find their next meal. Um, and, and the media has doused us with these pictures of destroyed uh, buildings, pictures of dead, dead animals, lying. and it's very heart-wrenching stuff. And these have become our, our, um, the main thing that we have seen. I have this volunteer box there because that, in those words, is a nightmare of a story. So one of the things that has happened that it's just very, just, it's just the worst of humanity. Um, these folks, they come across women and children, again, predominantly, they get into these countries they, have, they don't speak the language, they don't know anybody, and they see this sign. Now, it's not an English volunteer, it's, it's written in Ukrainian. Uh, volunteer, and you think, okay, I can trust this person. Well, what's happening is that that has become the slogan for, um, for people who have been uh, human, human trafficked. So these volunteers with these signs are actually taking women and children and they are just, it's, it's horrific things I won't go into. Um, but it, it does include organ donation. Um, and, and so these are the stories, the heart-wrenching stories 
that we at the Outreach Foundation are hearing about from people who have made it uh, to safety into some regions. Um, one of the neat things that one of the things that uh, anybody who's been uh, with had done any kind of work uh, in, in emergency relief, uh, this comes from one of our partners who has migrated to spring. They said none of our team or our friends had been trained on what to do in case of war in Ukraine. That's why it was difficult to answer. What can we do to help? And they were inundated with that question. What can we do? And they said, we don't know. And that's why we appreciate any initiative. And, and so anything that, that can happen that is a good thing is a good thing to do. Uh, the person who said this is, is one of the founders of Verduga Ministries. And that is one of our partners that we have invested a little bit in. It's not one of our major partners, um, but uh, they are doing some fantastic work. Um, they've been around Ukraine for quite some time. I see Bill Goff on this call, and he's, he's a, he knows all about this group. Uh, these are good friends of ours. Uh, they invest in youth under 18 with the specific claim. They said most of 85% of the people who come to know Christ um, in Ukraine are under the age of 18. And so they want to hit them early. What they have been doing, um, kind of working our way up from number four there is jam school. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an after school ministry that they do in their normal times that appeals to, to it, it teaches youth under the age of 18, some various uh, skills uh, that they would need to, to succeed in leadership and, and creatively. Um, but the things, and then they also do number two, quite, quite frankly, during the summers, so these English camps, because people want to learn English. It's one of the ways uh, that people are able to move out of Ukraine or move out or hire into some jobs uh, that are good for them. But what they have, that they've been able to transition to, and this is number one and three, are these online Christian education. So there's a team of 15, 15 women have migrated from Kyiv uh, to Spain. We got a chance to meet them in Warsaw, Poland. They are providing online Christian education. It's a whole, you know, it's a, it's a regular school. And, and they started with a few hundred. They are now at 11,000 children. 11,000 children being educated by these 15 women and some 20 mentors. And they're getting an education program that's been approved by the Ukrainian government for all children that can sign up. They offer it for free, but they, you know, there's a cost to it. It costs $82 a month and they have 70 kids paying uh, who can afford the education. Uh, and, and it's such a good education that the U Ukrainian government will, is accepting that education. It's Christian based, but the government, when the kids do return to Ukraine, they're going to accept it. Uh, they, they passed the national test and all this. So this, this is the kind of stuff that's going on through Reduga Ministries right now. They're also running uh, remotely Radobot clubs. So they, they, these clubs, and I'll show you a picture here. Um, these are two of the women uh, that, uh, they're, uh, that, are, that are, the bottom one there is the person who is uh, just the cheerleader and the one who is on the top right. Uh, uh, is is the Ira is her name and she's the person who puts together the whole program for the education. But this is a picture back in Ukraine. Uh, this is in Lviv. Uh, these children are learning how to build robots. Now the thing about these children is that they are all orphans. So this is a ministry going to orphans. The kids on the low end of the spectrum have zero chance to make it. Um, they're learning skills to build robots and kind of engineering type of things as kids that, that some of the more privileged kids are used to in school and these kids have never been exposed to. And this is going on right now. So this isn't something, this was not a picture taken months before the war. This is happening right now in Lviv through this school, Reduga Ministry, and they're doing it remotely, teaching these kids how to use robots and build and, and, and do very practical skills. It's, it's amazing uh, what's going on uh, through, through Aduga. Very proud to be with them on all of this. And like I said, they're serving 11,000 children from Spain and with only a team of 15 women and 20 mentors. 
College of Theology and Social Sciences. Uh, the Polish name is WSCS. I won't give you the specific name there from Warsaw, Poland. I want to thank Bob Fuller, who is a trustee of the Outreach Foundation for introducing us to them. Uh, they, of course, have focused on training for church leaders specialized for an Eastern European context, uh, both men and women. Uh, they have been around for several years. Um, they are doing hard, uh, good work in a hard place. The sharing the gospel in Eastern Europe is like plowing through concrete. This is what one of our great mythologists from that area said about that context. Think about that, very difficult work. But then they, they had the war happen and they decided by the Holy Spirit to said, you know, let's open up our, our, our place to, to families. And so now they have uh, 37 uh, people staying in the, on their campus with some who are disabled. And I wanna show you a couple of the pictures. These are some of the kids that we had a chance to meet um, who have now kind of resided. Again, it's their, their goal is to help refugees not feel like they're refugees. So they are, they are uh, staying in a home kind of thing. Right now they're on a school break again because it's a school year. They all are part of the school system. Uh, online, some of them with Raduga. Uh, and, and so they're on break right now watching television. Uh, these are some of the women with one of the translators that they've hired uh, to help them with uh, getting not just uh, job training, but also medical care that they need as families, because uh, some of the basics are covered, but not all of them. And so what, what the Outreach Foundation does through partners such as yourselves is we are providing that higher level of medical care that they cannot afford and that the Polish government cannot give to them. Um, so, so thank you for that. And then I love this picture. This is the president of the seminary. Uh, his name is Peter Novak. Um, and this guy's all in. I mean, he's, he's in to the point of playing foost table soccer with, with some of the kids. Uh, so he's just, he, it's his vision that just propelled this, this college to do this literally overnight. They weren't trained for it. They're, you know, they're, they're giving theological education at, a, at an undergraduate and graduate level. Uh, but they decided that the Holy Spirit was calling them to this, to add to that, this ministry with these refugee families. I love what this group is doing. And again, it's this personal touch. They're not ministering to the thousands or the tens of thousands. They're ministering to those whom God has brought to them. And, and it's, it's just 37, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's amazing the stuff that is going on. And because of the context that they're in, they're doing prayer groups together. They're doing Bible studies. The seminary has a vision now to take some of these adults and give them theological training. Uh, there's strong interest in this. There's openness to the gospel. It's, it's just remarkable to see what's going on here. So just some quick points that I've mentioned right now. Over 500,000 Ukrainians, it's now up to a million. Uh, the the 500,000 was a week old. So up to a million Ukrainians have returned to Ukraine, but they are displaced. Orphans uh, have been prevented from leaving. As I shared with you, over 100,000 kids have been lost track. So the government is not allowing orphans to leave. Uh, which has, has uh, uh, been a surprise for some people. The main sources of hospitality uh, are, have been churches, obviously spiritual help, but interestingly enough, refugees are sharing stories. It's the churches that have been uh, providing the main sources of hospitality. Uh, congregations are providing space in homes at their own expense. So, so places like City Church, uh, some of the churches in Poland, uh, and in Spain that we are aware of, the members of those churches are opening their homes, their own homes to, to refugees, but they aren't getting any support for that. Uh, the government is not giving them any stipend to do that. They have to do that at their own expense. And, you know, they aren't making a lot of money themselves, but it's just this sense of, hey, you know, we are together in this. It's a very personal uh, type of touch. And so, so we've wanted to come alongside these congregations who are doing that kind of work. 
Something that is interesting that I wanted to, to highlight, uh, this came from an interview we had in Warsaw with Michael Jablonski, who's the rector of, Refor of the Reformed Congregation there in Warsaw. He said, Middle Eastern refugees moved for political purposes, and that's what was going on before the war. Uh, as Russia was moving to Belarus along the Polish, uh, the Lithuanian, and the Latvian border, these middle refugees from middle, the Middle East, um, they were there to, to destabilize these countries a little bit. Um, well, these Middle Eastern refugees moved for political purposes are still living in prisons and other institutional settings rather than homes. Uh, so the governments have opened up prisons, other institutional settings that were uh, no longer being used uh, to these Middle Eastern men. They do not have the luxury of staying in somebody's house. They are regarded as terrorists and receive little to no attention. And, and I like what Michael said. Um, he said, this is something that we Christians must confess and repent of. Uh, so that was an interesting story. And that leads me to uh, City Church, because City Church uh, is one of our partners that has been with us in Europe for some time. Uh, Saul has come to me where I showed the Liverpool pictures. Saul was on that trip. He's in one of those pictures doing a baptism. And he wanted to learn how to reach out to Middle Easterners who are now in Lithuania housing in a prison. So City Church has learned how to do this from, from the Iranians themselves. And so they have a ministry to Middle Eastern refugees who were, there's 700 of them. And, and, and City Church is, is committing itself to helping out there. They've uh, started a hotel for Ukrainian refugees uh, that is being run by the Ukrainian refugees themselves. Uh, the orphans were not able to come. They are still in touch with the Ukrainian government, though, and they're, they're developing this, but we'll see if it actually can happen. And it, because they're a church, they're providing prayer, Bible study, and worship opportunities, making it clear and, uh, that, that Jesus is about this. And, and Saul actually credits the work that the Outreach Foundation did to bring him from Lithuania over to Liverpool to meet Shapur. He said, that's what convinced him to be bold. Um, without that connection, they probably would not have been as bold uh, about this. So just a few pictures here. And then I wanna conclude with a story from Saul, but this is the hotel, it's the restaurant. Joy may remember this place. Uh, this, we had lunch here. This is, about a kilometer away from LCC. And I know, Billy, maybe you have been there. It's a hotel that during COVID shut down, they, they no longer were able to run. City Church is now, has now rented this facility out. They're, they're upgrading the kitchen. That's the restaurant that we used to eat in. And it's now become housing for nearly 50 Ukrainians and their families. Uh, and it's just a joy to see what's happening there. Saul, again, is the guy leading the, the giving thanks at the table there. Uh, there's Saul, again, he's all in guy, uh, like Peter Novak. He's doing shopping uh, for the runs that they have to make at, at some of the grocery stores. There, you know, these are the Ukrainian women making these wonderful types of uh, dumplings that they have over there. But the Ukrainians are doing this themselves. This isn't about a welfare situation. I want to tell you the story. I can't get her picture up because I couldn't find a way to do it. So Rena is uh, this, this professor, fine arts professor, just joined, uh, just came to Lithuania last week. Uh, for three days and three nights, she was crying. She's living with this people at the hotel. She's in this picture here. And um, she has a PhD in fine arts. And Saul uh, introduced her to somebody from, from Clapham University. She was able to, she's now teaching. So this happened this week. Uh, she's now teaching uh, at uh, fine arts at, at, uh, at Clapham University. She knows how to speak Russian. So several of the Russian families who are wanting mosaics done in their homes, these are some of the more wealthy Russians, they want uh, somebody to come in and do mosaics and art in their homes. She is their interior decorator, so to speak. And she's able to earn a living now as a refugee and is able to move, she'll be moving from here to have her own apartment. 
She has a, a child with her. Um, and, and this is the kind of thing that's going on. It's, it's about helping the refugees not feel like refugees. And in the process, they are learning about worshiping the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and I just can't say enough about this amazing partnership. The one that I'm going to close with is Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in Lviv. Uh, it has done a lot of different things. It's providing humanitarian relief locally, but also they are sending out these uh, people in cars and vans to eastern Ukraine uh, and, and in some of the cities that we've heard mentioned that are being bombed. They're going in there covertly and providing relief to soldiers uh, and to families who are unable to get out. Uh, they're, they're delivering medical care. Uh, we have a partner in Romania who's helping that. It's just an amazing story uh, of what has happened there. Uh, that started while I was in Liverpool, actually, and, and, and Father Olaf, who's one of the priests of this parish, uh, sent me this help uh, cry. We, we, have, we need an urgent need for medical care supplies. I looked at uh, a good friend of mine, David Rice, who was sitting next to me in Liverpool and is a, a partner with the Antioch partners there serving the Iranians there. I said, so what do you know? Who, how do we do this? And he knew somebody in Romania and that person was with him in Campus Crusade. And that person is doing these medical care runs. His name is um, Benny. It's just amazing what's going on there. It's just, I heard, I got a bunch of pictures from him yesterday about this network that just spawns through these relationships of friendship, of trust. Um, this church is providing shelter to hundreds of people who are displaced now. And again, because this is a, a, a wonderful, you know, Father Olaf is a true believer. I, I love his faith. Um, but they are providing prayer, Bible study, worship opportunities, uh, taking confessions of people who have long since abandoned the church and, and God. And here's, uh, this is Father Olek last week leading a Bible study. Of, these are all refugees. These are all people who are internally displaced and they are hungry for the gospel and he's giving it to them. We're so proud. This is a picture of of some of the, the people lined up outside the church. Again, I said the church is the, is the top source for people coming and experiencing warm hospitality. Um, and then this is, for, this is Benny outside of his van uh, providing medical supplies uh, to people. Uh, one of the cool things that we've discovered is that, uh, this, that we've connected Benny uh, with Father Olek and his team in Lviv, they take the medical supplies that he, they get there. And I wonder if I have pictures. Yes, okay. So they send them throughout Ukraine. So this is one of the pictures. These are all from the Outreach Foundation. <laughs> this is a big thank you to us and to the, to the people, to, to you all who are supporting this run. Um, they, are, they, they take them from Lviv and then they're sending them to this hospital where they then go out to all areas of Ukraine as mobile hospital vans. And those vans have physicians and nurses in them who provide on-site medical care in some of the most hard hit areas of Ukraine where people cannot get to hospitals um, or where hospitals have been completely bombed out. This is stuff you all are doing. And, and they are saying thank you with that picture. So I just wanted to, to really uh, say something there and to thank you. Uh, one of the people said the situation we met is very bad, but we will try our best to help you stay as comfortable as possible, not because we are good people, but because we have experienced God's love and we want to share it. So thank you for being part of it. Just a few last points here. Uh, as of yesterday, we had $660,135 in donations. Uh, so thank you for that. We've had 498 individual donors, 74 congregations uh, send money to us. Uh, we have 267 new donors out of all this, which is just remarkable. And we are very thankful that. Currently, we've sent 71% of those funds. Somebody may ask, why haven't we sent it all? Because we're following a six-month support plan. We've told our partners about this, and they are thankful for that. Because what happens is that 
over time donations wane and we want to stand with them for six months we're in the we're in month three of that right now and we're projected out to about a six month support plan um so so that's that's good news up till now people have said over there please don't come unless you speak ukrainian russian uh you know russian or or uh have a very specialized skill that is needed that's when you can come but up till now they said please don't just send money because that's what we need they have changed that now uh so they would like us to come over we're putting together a team of 12 people uh that uh will be visiting june 8th through 17th we're going to visit these friends that i've just talked about we cannot get into ukraine because of insurance purposes so we will not see that side of all of this but uh, that warsaw connection the lithuania connection reduga ministry and that has now moved over to spain we're going to see each of those friends at their request can I hear from them, hear their stories. They want to say thank you to us themselves, uh, which is a valuable thing, but we want to show up and hear their stories. And they want to tell us about those next kind of big things that they have got planned. And so we're looking forward uh, very much uh, to that trip. I'm going to stop the share right now uh, and just say, uh, I guess, thank you for showing up. Um, and those of you, I guess now, uh, Kelly would be a time for any questions that you have. Uh, be happy to answer them. But um, uh, again, just thanks for being here and listening. And, and again, thank you mainly for for what you all are doing. What you're, I hope this was a an opportunity for you to see what what's really going on. Uh, so open it up for questions now. I guess. Okay, yeah, um, I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment, but I think there's it's a small enough group if somebody has a question you can unmute yourself and just ask. Um, I would ask Tom um, if someone's interested in the trip, um, should they get how should they get in touch with you. Sure, uh, and Joy's back in Kelly I think to admit her yeah um, you know it, the trip just we we have it on our our website um, if you reach out to me personally tom at the outreach foundation uh, i will send you a trip uh, brochure we're limiting it to 12 people again we don't want to overwhelm our people and you just sign up you let me know hey we want to go um, and again we're going to keep it quick uh, we don't want to burden those people uh, who are over there so we're going to spend like a day in Warsaw. We're going to we're going to get as close to the border as we can with a a, a, a group there that is is has been doing some really good work uh, close to the border. We're going to take some humanitarian supplies there. Uh, we're going to be in Lithuania for three days, seeing you know city church. But uh, again, it's not we're not going to be there very long. And Spain will be there one day. And it's really just to go in and out, hear their stories, pray over them, and then bring those stories back. Um, so so that, that's really what the purpose is. And just sign up to let me know you want to go. Thank, good question, Kelly. Tom, there was a, a fellow here in town that does Batman on a large scale. Uh, went to uh, Warsaw, Krakow, several places, and did his he does a, a faith-based message of hope for children mm -hmm. that's pretty powerful uh coming from batman and anyway right. uh and he i heard him speak the other day and one of the things he said was that poland and ukraine have been horrible enemies for like centuries but what he has yeah. seen is poland has forgiven as we're supposed to and uh, accepting, becoming a part of the rescue uh, of all these folks. And they, they've bought into it completely. And he said mm -hmm. it, it was just a beautiful thing to see once you know the history going on behind it. Yeah, I, and God is building bridges. And, and I think that's happening across the board. Um, you know, I don't want to paint too rosy a picture of it because, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't happy about this. And it's in that sense, we have the same thing going on here in America. You know, who are these strangers? Let's get them out of here. I mean, you, you certainly have that. And sadly, there's a lot of Christians who are thinking that. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why that in and, and and you know and and what the, the reformed pastor that I referred to earlier said. You know, this is a point of confession for the church that that you know, okay, we'll we'll look at people who are kind of like us and receive them, but anybody who's not like us. Uh, yeah. you can be afraid of so there's still a lot of fear monty but it is wonderful to see that that the holy spirit is causing some bridges of reconciliation to happen because of this so one of the things that the refuge you know people are saying we we wonder why this happened because god has a plan that sometimes through suffering things happen his name is glorified reconciliation can occur we don't like the suffering we don't like what's going on but god's glory is being achieved through it that's a great point to bring up monty thank you for that well and and another thing i'm seeing uh we are becoming the church with a capital c instead of the churches and and, and through the partners that you guys have developed and others i'm seeing uh, Mm -hmm. online and things that, oh yeah! Holy cow! This all these walls are coming down. And well, how, exactly. How can we be a part of your solution? Well, and yeah. that's yeah. That and that the walls are coming down. But we're also seeing the the big church. I'm glad Bill Goff is here, um, because you also see these other expressions of the church that are not part of the institutional church. So Reduga Ministry is a very good example of that. They've had a vision to transform the Ukrainian culture of leadership for years, working with the youth and giving them real skills for future leaders of of Ukraine. And, and, And it's not just working with the impoverished people, it's working with the future children of the leaders to transform their hearts. And the church institution isn't doing that. That's an expression of the church through through these, through NGOs and other, other expressions. Mm-hmm. And, and it's phenomenal what's going on. And, and this is what the Outreach Foundation has become open to. And is, you know, the Holy Spirit's opening these things to us too, that, that, uh, that it's not all within the institutional church, um, that, that, that there are fantastic movements going on in this, this war, the refugee situation really since 2015, in Europe has has allowed us to see these things and, and God's mm-hmm. bringing us all together. Any other questions? I don't have a question, Tom, but I have a, a quick a story uh, for those of you who don't know the also uh, LCC, Lithuania yeah. Christian College originally uh, is in Klaipeda and that fact of where Saul graduated from and and uh, his wife taught there as well and I, I've been privileged to be a part of that for 20 years and and uh, we had a board meeting two weeks ago and we are now at 850 students uh, from 57 different countries you talk about a diaspora mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and we have 180 students right there on the campus of uh, from Ukraine, 50 Russians and 35 Belarusians. But one of the heartwarming things uh, to me was that the uh, we have 28 Afghan students mm-hmm. that just went through this last year. And they mm-hmm. are coming forward in huge numbers uh, yeah. of, of efforts to help the Ukrainian students and then the uh, ones that they know that graduated last year or the year before. And uh, uh, so, and as well as we have 56 Middle East scholars, which are, who basically for, were from refugee camps in the, in the Middle East when ISIS was kicking them out of their homes too, so. Mm. And we'll be, seeing, we'll be visiting LCC and seeing that happen uh, when we're on our visit to Lithuania. Um, one of the things that I discovered in Pakistan is that um, there are 3 million Afghan refugees in Pakistan because of what happened last fall. And, and these are the forgotten. I mean, so this is a huge, you know, there are more people in the world now who are out of their homes than there ever have been. Uh, before in human history and and you know the gospel is 
the church are, is finding a way to get the gospel to these people where back home it was very difficult. Um, it's a difficult in Pakistan. And that's, and Kelly, <laughs> we probably should do one of these about Pakistan because uh, for the Outreach Foundation, Pakistan is so pivotal. It's the Istans, which are several countries uh, south of, you know, in that uh, Central Asia area, we can't get to there. We, it's impossible to get to an Istan country except yeah. Pakistan. And so we, we are very glad of what's happening. I can't wait to share the news there of what we discovered on our most recent trip. So, but thanks, Bill, for bringing that up. Mm. Well, I'm not hearing any questions. But listen, I, again, just thank you to each of you. And if there's any interest in, in having um, me or, or somebody from the Outreach Foundation come and talk about any of this with you, I'm happy to do a Zoom call with a, a mission committee, a presbytery, a, you know, a, a church. Um, happy to come and, and be in person as well. I mean, you know, I've been to several congregations that, that really want to hear more about uh, what we're, we're talking about on this, on this call. Um, happy to set something up. So just again, just reach out uh, and then we'll, we'll take a deep dive with it. But Kelly, thanks for pulling us all together. <laughs>